I would like to suggest that for adults, when we think about managing or running an organization, that there are four styles. So um, I want to, um, we're going to use some shorthand, but we'll talk about the um, go-getter type as a producer. You know the type. They just make things happen, right? There are others who, by their nature, are administrators. They always know when a clipboard or a rubber band is needed, when we need to have someone um, stationed in the hallway to make sure no one gets run over by something. Very um, important task. Um, there are some, God, I wish I was one, who are entrepreneurs. They're an idea a minute person. And they've got just a tremendous imagination and um, the practicality of something never seems to get in the way of <laughs> their excitement about a new idea. And then we have the integrators. The people who want to make sure that we can really integrate something socially and make it happen in our organization. Now, it would be lovely if every person who had a leadership role in our school had an equal assortment of all four of these skills. Probably doesn't happen. Each of you could probably look at this list and say, if I had to pick one to describe myself, I most like and decide. There's nothing bad or good about any of them. They're all necessary in any organization. But at different times in the organization, different amounts of one are more important than others. Can you see how that might be? So let's talk. Let's see if I can do this without making the chalk squeak about a developing organization. And over here, this is um, the time of pre-birth intentions. What are we imagining is the primary mode at that point? Right, okay. So you have probably no P, no A, a big E, and no I, right? It's, it's all a vision. And then we actually um, move this organization and open the doors and something begins to happen. So how does this mix change? Make it yep, so all of a sudden, instead of just E, now you've got big P, and maybe very little A, E, or I, right? And then, now your childhood. School's up and running, people are joining you. What's going on next? Well, actually, I, I was going to say that probably the next step is that you're, you're going to find that you need to kind of keep coming up with some new ideas because you probably started a parent taught thing going and you got that up and running and it was working pretty well and then we decide we need to move it into um, a nursery program and maybe we're talking about grades and so there's a, a period of kind of some successive entrepreneurial insights that happen here in a very young organization. The direction you all were talking about is generally where we're going, but we're moving a little bit more slowly here. Now we hit adolescence. We were just talking about adolescence. So what happens now? L lots of form. So in some ways, the producer can kind of kick back a little bit because we've got things sort of running, um, but we need lots of administration. And in fact, there's a different kind of 
entrepreneurial um, sense that's called for, someone who dares to create new organizational forms and has visions for how we might reorganize ourselves. So it moves this way. Um, and then if we're really kind of just starting to fire on all cylinders, we've got all of this going on and we still don't need a whole lot of integration. You know, we're producing, we're administering, we're controlling, we are um, revitalizing ourselves, um, and we all just get along. And then we reach this point of maturity or stability, the entrepreneurial thing can go away, and we begin to integrate because we're a mature organization. We worry about the people. Now, we talked about you know, what can happen if we stay too long here, that we become old and sclerotic, right? And um, even though it's great when you're in a mature school and it's all happening, um, but that doesn't mean you're going to stay here forever. Organizations grow old and atrophy, just like people do. Now, we're fortunate that there are things that we can do to help restore them to health. But if the organization kind of goes untended, we begin to move into this, where we're doing lots of administrative work and lots of talking to each other about our feelings, and we're not getting as much done, and we're not bringing in new ideas. This is sort of the aristocracy phase, right? Danger, danger, <laughs> danger. Um, if, you, if this continues, you end up losing all of your um, production and you go sort of like this, no entrepreneurial, and so it's all administration and integration. Um, if that continues, you move into bureaucratic senility. And finally, bankruptcy or death. Different combinations of skill sets required at each stage. And just changing up the people at any one stage won't necessarily fix what's going on. But it may be helpful for you to spend, we won't do it now, but if you want to, think of the 10 most influential people in your organization and attach a label to them and look at who the 10 most influential people are just in terms of how much you've got of each of these skills. Do you have a match? with where your school is? Or is it indicative, perhaps, of a source of your problem? So if you're trying to move here and you've got way too much entrepreneurial still wanting to hold on, maybe a reflection <coughs> of something that's going on. Just a way of um, checking on things. Now, Unlike our human bodies, where aging appears to be inevitable, we do do certain things, um, those of us who are older, um, to try and stave it off. We exercise, we try to eat right, um, you know, go on walks, um, meditate, whatever it is. So too for organizations, there are things that we can do to um, react to um, movement in a negative direction in our organizations. Mm -hmm.